Hey everyone and welcome to Comic Breakdown. If you are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the content that we have coming out. Now today's video, we are going to be covering Future State Imperious Lex vs. Superman issue number one. Now if you haven't been keeping up with the Future State line or you just haven't caught up with today's issues, Go ahead and check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It'll take you my playlist that'll get you completely caught up on everything Future State related. And with that being said, let's dive into this issue. So in this issue, we pick up on Metropolis. Now the year is 2050, and here on Earth, everyone is gathered at the United Planets meeting in the brand new headquarters. And everyone's been gathered here just to really go over, you know, intergalactic affairs and so on and so forth. The, the entire United Planets Council, everybody that's within this council, has all agreed to move to a different kind of energy, which is stellar energy. And so we're seeing a, a more utopious type society building up. And then this is when the floor opens up to Lois Lane. And though she is reluctant to bring up the subject, she's been getting membership requests from Lexor, the planet that is currently run by Lex Luthor. And everybody's just like, oh man, that guy. Like, isn't he dead? Like, didn't he just disappear? Like, what? Can we just cancel this now? Can we tell him no already and move, move upon our day? But this is when the Guardian tells us that by law, a one hour period of reflection is required before voting on a proposal. That way everybody has a, a, a opportunity to have cooler heads prevail no matter what the topic is. And while they wait this hour, we have the arrival of none other than Kal-El of Earth, also known as Superman. And Superman's here to let them know that he thinks he knows why Lex Luthor is applying for membership. You know, the last couple of months, Superman has been searching systems in the Outer Rim, worlds outside of the United Planets, looking for solutions to their, to their energy shortage. And that's when he came upon Theme, an army of robots known as Reticulates. And this robot army is literally tearing apart worlds and scavenging every single bit uh, of mineral or metals or precious metals that they can find. And they had such sophisticated weaponry, such as plasma lasers, carbon disruptors, titanium razors, and so, so much more. And Superman's not sure how many worlds that they've looted, or how much they've stolen, or how many civilizations they've destroyed by doing this, but it didn't take long to figure out who sent them. None other than Lex Luthor. Because Lex Luthor built these robots. And everyone on the council is immediately like, all right, let's move to deny his proposal permanently and indefinitely. And this is when Superman says that there's more. Lex Luthor is maintaining control over Lexor using a propaganda network, keeping Lexor safe and employed at the same time. So he's doing all of this thing. He's keeping the people happy. And so they're complacent. They don't understand exactly what's going on. And honestly, at this point, they don't really care because he's continuing wealth to the people. And Superman does his best to take on these robots. He doesn't let anger overcome him, but he doesn't lack emotion either. But what he saw in one of these robots was seemingly fear. Now, being familiar with Lex Luthor robots, he was able to disable this thing. But he saw fear with inside of this thing, a sign that over time it could be reprogrammed. So with the chance of these things being able to be reprogrammed, he decides that he will simply disable them and hide them out. Now while Superman is doing all of this, Lex Luthor and, and Lexor, the people of Lexor, are finding out that the robots aren't really in operation right now. And Lex is worried that if the people find out that the robots aren't bringing in the wealth, that he's going to end up strung up like many dictators before him. And so he goes out to try to find out exactly what's going on. And as he leaves, Superman arrives, landing on Lexor and trying to tell the people that these robots have been robbing the rest of the Outer Rim. And this is the only source of Lexor's wealth. But the people don't want to hear this. At the end of the day, these guys are, are firmly believing everything that they are told by Lex Luthor. So with the inability to change anybody's minds, he does one thing he can do, and that's destroys Lex Robotics. 
And this is when Lex Luthor shows up and clocks Superman right in the face. Now, normally, this wouldn't hurt Superman, but Lex Luthor picked this planet specifically because of its red sun. And everybody knows that the red sun weakens Superman. So, of course, Lex Luthor is going to pick a planet close to one to reside on. And this is where Lex Luthor kind of loses it. You know, he he's just like, I came here to start over, to, to get away from you, from the, the whole idea of Superman and all of that, and you just couldn't leave me alone. And he lets him know, like, I'm not leaving again. I lost everything when I left Earth, and I'm done losing. Lexor belongs to Lex. And as all of this is going on, Superman's able to slip out of his grip long enough to give a good punch to his knee, disabling the super suit. And with Superman weakened, he goes to leave. With a renewed hatred within Lex Luthor again for Superman, because he feels like Superman will never let him be. This fight will be to the death no matter what. Superman barely making it back alive to be able to let everybody know exactly what happened, and Lex knows now, with the robots being destroyed, his economy is in the trash. And so everybody, after hearing this news, takes their one hour to figure out exactly how they're going to vote. Superman and Lois go and get some privacy in a cleaning closet. After months of being apart, you know, they, they kiss and tell each other how much they miss one another. But Superman also divulges that he wants to help the people of Lexor. He doesn't want to ban them. He wants to invite Lex Luthor into the United Planets. Because no matter how bad or how evil Lex Luthor is, at the end of the day, billions of people are going to suffer because of his actions, and that's not something Superman can agree with. And so with this, they go to the meeting, and everybody casts their vote. And Lois Lane says that she opposes the vote. Even though, you know, it was her idea, everybody's just trying to figure out exactly why she opposed this vote all of a sudden. And she says, you know, it's true that Lex, you know, he ruled by, a, Lexor is, is ruled by a murderous con man. And its people are at best gullible dupes. And at worst, accomplices to the crimes committed on their behalf. But so was Earth, not so very long ago. At one time, they were literally fighting one another over territory and resources. It wasn't until they, they figured out they didn't have to fear one another that they really started to build a future for themselves. And that's why today she's voting for a, a, a pretty much an act of faith. That these people are going to be able to see the errors of their ways and be able to come into the United Planets and try to better themselves. And so with this, the vote is agreed upon. Lex Luthor is allowed into the United Planets and dictated by law, a mission will be set out, dispatched to coordinate on Lexor with Lex Luthor and the sponsor has to be Representative Lois Lane and that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Personally, I am absolutely loving this. I'm really excited to see how this is all going to play out. You know, we're picking up years and years. You know, we have an old Lois Lane, an old Lex Luthor, old Superman. And they're all come for full circle at the end of the day. It's, what, it's really what it comes down to. It's come full circle. You know, Lex Luthor, Superman, they try to get away from each other. But it seems like fate has other, other plans for them. Because they can never escape one another's wrath. No matter what or how much distance is between them. All in all, though, I have to say this was a pretty awesome issue. I am very excited to see where it's going to be going. All of Future State, honestly, there's been one or two issues I haven't liked, but all all in all, I have to say, these have been really awesome issues. And I, I, I'm scared to say it, but DC might actually be redeeming themselves and, and really bringing themselves out of their, their dark age of comics, if you will. So I'm really excited to see what everything's going to be transpiring in the future, especially with Infinite Frontier right on the horizon. That's going to be an awesome, awesome exploration of all the possibilities and different types of heroes out there but yeah with that being said be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already if you want to support the channel in another way go ahead and check out our patreon we got tons of exclusives go ahead and check it out for as little as three dollars a month you can support the channel you can also check out comic breakdown and more podcasts available on itunes spotify or wherever you get your podcasts 
episodes every Friday talking about the weekly comic pools as well as cinema to include things like WandaVision and Wonder Woman 84. If you are in the Medford, Oregon area, please go check out Rogue City Comics. They have all the latest comics coming out every week, so you never have to worry about where you're going to get your comics anymore. So if you live locally, go check them out. They're awesome people, great environment, and I highly recommend checking out all of their action figures from the gallery line. And with that being said, until the next video.